Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and welcome, welcome, welcome to the slightly late running uh, Daily Bull versus Bear webinar here with Steve Miley on the call for TradeDay.com. So, welcome everyone. Uh, we'll go through our usual run through in here today. I'm um, sorry, just a little technical there when I started the webinar, but uh, we'll go through our usual run through. We'll take a look at the calendar, what we've got coming up, what we've had today. Uh, we'll take a look at um, what's going on in financial markets? So, look at some um, articles from the major news wires, and then we'll take a look at the charts and see where we can uh, potentially um, benefit from what's going on right now and uh, get some lock some profits in. Um, as ever, um, volatility remains relatively high in here, and would certainly strongly suggest maybe keeping to trading to the micros. Um, if you are trading on the minis, then please do you know. Watch your stops, keep your stops tight, watch those uh, daily limits in here, um, stop limits and, uh, you know, make sure you're not triggering any kind of events um, on the uh, um, on the uh, challenge, if you are on the challenge. Um, so, yeah, uh, let's take a look at the calendar, first of all. Um, so we've had uh, PMI, PMI day today. Um, so you can see in here slight misses on most of the European PMI data we've had so far through today. So we've had um, from uh, France, Germany, Eurozone as a whole, in the UK. UK slightly beat on the manufacturing PMI, um, the European slight misses, not really uh, big misses, only slight misses in this, so um, not significantly impacting markets. So, and they're still above 50, so all still very positive in here. Um, and this is obviously, these are, this is data for um, February, um, when we would have had you know, some of the responses pre, uh, potentially pre the uh, Ukraine invasion, but some of them may be post Ukraine invasion. Um, but so uh, markets, but certainly, you know, we had the build up of the troops um, uh, through February. So uh, markets, uh, you know, the, the outlook is still relatively positive, um, given uh, the, um, the obviously the negative events that are uh, um, happening um, between Russia and Ukraine in here at the moment. Um, we have Lagarde speaking uh, later today, shortly, uh, 26 minutes time. Um, so maybe keeping an eye on that. Um, any kind of comments around the uh, Ukraine-Russia situation, uh, potential for comments on the banking sector, um, um, sanctions that have been put in place, etc. Watching out for that. If you're trading Canadian dollar, some of you um, uh, do trade the Forex uh, side. Uh, keep an eye on here, um, uh, US Canadian uh, GDP, sorry, Canadian GDP. If you're trading US Canadian dollar, um, keep an eye on that, definitely. Um, we get them the uh, manufacturing PMI um, from market, first of all. So this is at 9.45 Eastern time, 8.45 Central. Um, now that data there um, is not as, um, even though the, Euro the or the European and Asian data, the market PMI data um, is um, the the ones that everyone watches. Um, you know, this is significant. The the market manufacturing PMI for the US, but what is far more watched is the ISM data, the Institute of Supply Management data, which we get at. 10 a.m. Eastern, 9 a.m. Uh, Central, and that's at 3 p.m. if you're in the UK, 4 p.m. if you're in uh, Europe um, so, um, on Central European time. So, um, yeah, so certainly that data in there is important. Data. Now, as, as we said yesterday, um, you know, generally speaking, you know, this would not be, um, you know, this data is important, but given the events that are, you know, continuing to develop um, in uh, Ukraine, um, the focus is very much on there and just flows in the market. The data may have a, a slight impact. This is important data. Um, we also get a couple of uh, Bank of England um, players um, speaking, um, MPC member, members speaking this afternoon. Um, Saunders and Mann are speaking from the Bank of England um, uh, this afternoon. Uh, that is late in the day. Um, uh, UK time um, It's going to be uh, 1.30 and 2 p.m respectively um eastern time and it's the state of the union address um now obviously um that's biden this evening um no actual time on that you know i think it's uh, uh fairly uh in the, it's in the evening uh, us time um so biden um state of the nation address so annual address um clearly there's going to be um talk around uh ukraine russia other stuff as well um, but it'd be interesting to see um, if, you know, I, I don't think you'll kind of, you know, make any massive kind of new statement that's something that we don't, um, we're not not seeing before. But, you know, definitely got to be keeping an eye on that just in case as well, um, late in the session today. So uh, watching out for that as well. So uh, that's what we've got. Um, OPEC plus meeting, I think, starts today, but we don't get the resolution of that until tomorrow. So uh, more eyes on that going into tomorrow. Um, what's going on in markets right now? Well, if we go look at the European markets, we're down in here across the board. 
Um, so, uh, and, and we've had no real significant like kind of news. I mean, there is a, a apparently a forty kilometer convoy um, heading um, towards uh, Kiev, uh, towards the Ukraine capital at the moment. Um, you can see European indices down anywhere between one and a half and up to three percent in here this morning. So significant drops um, on European indices. Um, however, if we go and take a look at uh, U.S. markets in here. Um, not so significantly lower. We had, you know, they were fairly resilient yesterday. We were dipping and rebound. NASDAQ actually ended up up yesterday. Um, and um, S&P, I think, and Dow were slightly, we can see the Dow slightly lower. Dow was down half a percent. Um, and then NASDAQ, uh, the S&P was slightly lower. But then you can see this morning on the futures, we're slightly lower again. We're like um, about half a percent lower um, on the S&P. Um, NASDAQ nearly a percent lower in here. But market's relatively holding in um, quite well. We have, you know, so we've got um, in intensifying pressures um, uh, on the ongoing battle, uh, battles outside Kiev and um, moving into Kiev. So um, that is obviously worrying markets. And we've gone back into slightly into risk off mode. Now, the big move really has been in here, um, which the, you know, oil is back above $100. Um, the ruble has rebounded. OK, um, but the real big move in here is bond markets um and so if we go and take a look in here i've got on forex live in here 10-year government bonds uh, the bund yield so the, the german government bond is the the bund um has moved back into negative territory so it had turned positive um back on it says here february the first so um government bond yields in germany have been negative for some time um but they did go positive because of interest rate um cons you know uh, thoughts about interest rates uh, hikes uh, the ecb shifting to more hawkish turned german government bond yields um, to into positive territory um, for the whole of February. Um, but now we've just entered March and there's been a big uh, rally in bonds. Um, um, so bond prices, bund prices, that is German government bond prices, bund prices have gone higher and yields back lower, sending uh, German 10 year bunds um, back. Uh, so they've had, they're down 16 basis points today. Uh, biggest daily fall in yield since 2016. So that's even pre, even pre the move, you know, even taking into consideration the move we saw in um, um, during the pandemic. Um, it's, it's eclipsed any daily move that we've sort of seen um, since then. It's a huge move um, on bonds in here. Um, and I think it's just, this is, I, I don't think there was no new news on this guys, right? Um, we'll come and take a look at the, you know, I've got the the 10 year treasury chart as well. So treasury is rallied yesterday. Um, we're kind of in risk off mode um, and they rallied yesterday, but then a massive move higher in treasury. You look at this compared to most of the other bars that through here, you know, massive move higher in treasury is today. And the, and the bond market, I can go and get, let me just, I've got it on another um, tab in here, but let me go and open up. I can show you the government bond, uh, the bond future in here. So you'll see they're showing it here. If I, I can pop this one out. Uh, you can't really see it much better in here. Um, yeah, so you can see um, significantly lower in yields, but I can go and get just the better a second here, guys, and I can show you the uh, Bun chart here. Hopefully be able to open this up, just bring it across from another tab. Uh, so we can't open the chart layout for you. Let me see if we can just put this in here. Uh, FGBLH, FGBLH, okay. The code in here, okay, here we are. Just want to see extending this movement. There's obviously a bigger move on, on uh, European government bonds than we've seen in Treasury. So look at that, it's a huge move massive move higher so that's higher in price this is the bund future the euro bund future okay so this is the equivalent right to the 10-year note future so a huge push higher um in here um in in bund prices bund future prices okay and that's equivalent to then you can see this in here this 16 a basis point fall in 10-year yields german bund yields um the biggest daily fall since 2016 so it's a massive move in here uh really significant and again in here they're focusing on treasuries so in treasuries uh um, fall to a one-month low 
Um, Treasury yields down eight uh, basis point. Remember, they were up at above two percent um, not so long ago, only a few days ago, and now we're back down to like one point seven five percent. So a significant um, move lower in uh, Treasuries as well. And we see that if we go and take a look, there's the Treasury chart. That huge move higher today. And look, you can see not only so we you know there's a trend line in here on the June contract, by the way, on Treasuries. So um, if we go and take a look at the So we reversed this trend line in here last week and the market's in back and forth. Um, you know, there's the, the day the invasion occurred last Thursday. And then since then, and yesterday, is significantly higher. So this is all, remember, risk off. Now, what I think is particularly impressive, and this surge high today, we've taken out these peaks in here, all these peaks in here from um, early February and back into January. So, you know, we're highest um, price, lowest yields since, um, you know, almost the second part of January. Remember, this big sell off we had in here in, in Treasuries was because of the Fed becoming more hawkish. So this is reflecting, yeah, um, this is reflecting um, a, a potential shift um in in from the fed you know even and now look if you, if you have a look now this is the remember we've been looking at this and we're seeing the chances of a 25 basis point and it was 50 well there's no 50 on here now because there's no chance you remember this is the cme tool that shows you the chances of a 16th of march rate hike we're now pricing in 25 and there's actually in here um a very small i mean a slither of a chance a 0.2 percent chance that they don't hike rates at all Right. So um, a shift in here from, you know, um, it was only a week or so ago that this was like 60 percent for a 25 basis points hike on the 16th of March meeting and 40 percent chance of actually being 50. Now they're saying no chance of 50. Um, and if we step forward into the 4th of May. You know, um, now we've got um, chances of a, a, a 50 basis points up by the, the May meeting um, and very slim chance of it being 75 by the May, May meeting in here now. So this is not um, at the May meeting. This is how much higher from now by the May meeting, by the May meeting. So um, not even fully pricing it or just about fully pricing in two rate hikes, actually, um, in here um, by the May meeting. So, um, yeah, so the market's certainly shifting to an expectation of potentially um, a more dovish tone from the Fed. And, and, and you know, remember, we have uh, Powell testifying um, to Congress tomorrow. So that will be interesting as well um, to see if we get anything from that. Um, so we're definitely getting, you know, oil. In here above 100 bucks you know we'll come and take a look at the oil chart shortly um i say and those european government bonds spiking higher in price lower in yields biggest move since 2016 for bonds um treasury is also moving in here this is all risk off right that's a big risk off move gold as well higher okay gold notably higher as well in here um, um overnight as well so all of that um pointing um to risk off but what are stocks doing stocks are actually holding in okay you know so stocks and futures for stocks um, and futures for bond surge, oil gains, okay? Um, German 10 year yield near zero, or oh, it's actually through zero now. Um, but, you know, the, the fact is that equities are actually holding in quite well. Stocks and stock indices are holding in quite well. Yes, we're lower, but as we said there, you know, um, go take a look back at the uh, US where we are. We're down like, you know, um, where are we? Like, you know, half a percent to a percent, you know, half a percent to a percent here. It's not a really big move to the downside, considering what you're seeing in this flight to quality, this rush. And also, if we if you go and take a look at I'm not going to go for the FX markets as well. But if you come take a look at the FX markets, you know, we've not had a big move. You know, normally we'd see a big move into the dollar. Um, and if I, actually, I could quickly show you FX in here. But what we're not really seeing, and you say a move out of what we call risk currencies. So risk currencies are like um, the Australian dollar, the Canadian dollar. So we've seen the Australian dollar slightly lower. OK, um, the euro is actually up. OK, um, so, you know, we've not had a big, big, big moves into the dollar either in here this morning. So um, it's really been um, a move into, you know, oil, which has been in a bigger uptrend anyway, oil rallying. Um, we have had a move higher if we go and take a look at gold. It's easy to just go and take a look and step and take a look at the gold chart. So a rebound in gold, but it's not a big move at even higher in gold. You know, that massive spike higher, um, still inside yesterday's setback range in here. Yes, we go higher, then back lower, and then back higher again. You'd have to say that this is pointing higher, if anything, yeah? Um, and we'll take a look at that in a little bit more detail shortly. But not a big move up in, um, in gold. But, you know, look, go back to taking a look at oil. Oil's looking strong. 
you know, rejecting. Remember, we looked at a potential topping pattern yesterday. We had that very negative candlestick, but boom, you know, and almost back up, you know, through $100, almost back up to the spike high that we saw on the invasion day last Thursday. Um, so oil spiking higher, government bonds pushing higher prices, lower yields, but equity is actually holding in relatively well. Let's take a look at five things to start your day show. Um, um, penalties against Moscow, um, and then um, there seems to be this big convoy um, moving heavy, heavy overnight shelling um, of, of Kiev, and, and this massive convoy uh, making its way towards um, um, Kiev. So um, that's obviously uh, a real concern. Severe sanctions, Russia means the practice to become an uninvestable market. Um, so that's that's also you know been part of this risk loss move, but it doesn't mean that you know U.S. equities are going lower just because you know Russian Russia is now um, uninvestable investable basically um oil back higher again in here um talking about that in here and also checking about the bond market in here um so uh, where is it about the bonds in here um aluminium hit record high um and um and concerns rise over global wheat supplies um you know uh, uh russia a big supplier of wheat um and a rush into the bonds um with years a year falling to levels last seen last uh, seen before February's ECB 10 year tre treasury. So most of this we've covered in here already. Um, and then again in here, stock markets and futures for bond surge oil gains. Um, right, let's take a look at some of the charts where the opportunities maybe are. So uh, let's start with the commodities while I've got them up in it. I mean, oil, bang, we're actually hitting new highs now, right? So um, oil hits a new high in here. The peak there was. Um, 100.54 we've been up to 175 in here um you know i i can only advocate buying it you know uh, it's just made new highs while we've been while we've been talking in here so um you know it's wiped out it had a potential negative um friday through monday and then completely rejected that boom new high you know and can you go with this rally i think you can i don't think it's too late to get on it um you know go into a 15 minute chart it's just going to see it see it you know there we are on the high surging higher um you know any kind of dip in here you know is a buy opportunity i think um so uh, let's take a look at gold now gold is obviously playing it lagging and behind a little bit so maybe there's a good opportunity in here and gold um so you said we haven't seen a big movement in the um FX markets either, uh, really. But, you know, gold rebounding in here. We said this is a potential bigger topping pattern. Um, but, you know, yesterday I was very tentative about, you know, you know where you play this. Um, and I think at the moment in here, um, I'd, you know, prefer to be playing this from the uh, from the long side. You know, we have had a little dip and it's rebounding. Uh, we're in on a uh, one hour chart in here now. Um, so, you know, you've got this kind of these kind of trend lines are working out okay. Um, I'd put, now be putting on this steeper trend line that comes up from yesterday. Up through here. Now, any you know, the market's not even dipped anywhere near that in here at the moment. If we step in slightly to a 15-minute chart, you know, we've had a dip of its rebounding now. I think, you know, we take out the peak there. They've got these little, see these on these two candlesticks from the last couple of hours. You've got peaks at 1926.7. Um, and 1926.9 if you can go through 1927 i think that's your buy it you know you buy it you buy a buy on the break in here and then it comes it takes out the overnight high you know it could easily be up to that spike high and um, that's up at 1934 you know you could see this in the next few 1935 excuse me you could see this up at two thousand dollars in the next few days you know um so it is lagging a little bit so that's sorry that's that spike high and then we've got the bigger spike high up here in 1975 so easily up to 1935 in here um a break through that you know that those peaks 19 what did i say 19 basically 1930 1927 through there quickly here and then here um so the high there 1935 and then maybe closer to here somewhere in here so we could easily see 1950 today um so um i think there's an opportunity there on on oil and and i think you know it's it's the the equity markets you have to say are holding in really 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 well so start from the s p 500 we have had a dip lower you know the market's been you know a couple of times now up to this kind of 43 83 84 area you can see some failure peak over here as well and if i zoom out on the s p we spoke about this kind of horizontal line it just pierced this kind of this inverse head and shoulders it's kind of completed that it did pop above the the the, the line in here okay we've got this horizontal line you've got the peaks here so 43.91 there where we've been up to here 43.99 seems to be heading at 4400 you've had another little dip you've still got higher highs and higher lows so higher lot higher 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 high and then on this dip you know holding above this low now considering what's going on in the bond markets considering how negative the bond markets tells you they are 
equities are holding in really well. So if we get any kind of respite in bonds, if bonds dip low, and remember, bonds are probably um, equities are probably being helped by you know the reason bond markets are up is because you know you know obviously because they're a safe haven bid, but there's also now a fading chance of a more aggressive Fed and global central banks. So that's positive. That's why the Nasdaq has been outperforming on both the way down and the way back up again because you know now we're in a position of potentially um, not as hawkish a Fed in play. So you know I think this is a, a opportunity you know we're on the one hour chart now if i step into a 15 minute in here look the markets had this notable sell-off in here through the european session and now is forming a base okay now it is on this current bar selling back off again i think you can hold above these lows over here so on the we've got here um this is from yesterday evening my time so it's late in the afternoon uh us so we've got lows here at um 43.10 and 4307 and a quarter. If we can hold 4310, 4307 on any kind of setback, looking for a, a, the market to um, swing back high. Now, remember, we do have all those events to take into consideration. We have the two sets of PMI data um, from market and then from the ISM at 10 a.m. Eastern time. And then we also get um, the State of the Union address later on. And then obviously we're keeping an eye on this convoy um, and any breaking news coming out of Ukraine. Um, alternatively, you, know, you want it to hold those levels here. This would be where I have my stop down below here. Looking for it to turn now. If it turns above this like overnight high in here, so we've got that high there, 43.49 and a quarter. So like above 43.50, this looks bullish. Below 43.07, it looks bearish for me. So I'm looking for this turn, you know, and I say we are setting off on the current bar but looking for the market to turn from here. Let's take a look at NASDAQ. You know, it's going to be a similar story in here. You know, so a really bullish day yesterday, bullish outside day, bullish engulfing day. The market was lower and higher than the previous day, than Friday. Um, the, the body engulfing the previous uh, day's body, Monday's body engulfing Friday's body, and also the high and low outside the high and low of Friday. That's very positive. We did nudge higher and then set back. But if we step in now, it's like a one hour chart. Again, here you've got kind of this inverse head and shoulders. Okay, uh, let me get rid of a lot of this old analysis. You've taken, you've reversed this bigger trend line. That's important. Um, in here, you've got this inverse head and shoulders. So you've got like shoulder here, head, shoulder here. Now you could argue it's an upward sloping trend, um, neckline on the inverse head and shoulders. So if I take the, the neckline across here, we've also broken the neckline there, tentatively broken the neckline. But you can see in here, again, higher highs and higher lows. We've had another swing back lower in here and the market trying to swing from above that low. Now that low, if I step in again, go into the 15 minute, Again, it's going to be similar stuff. We've got this lows here from uh, yesterday. So they are down at uh, 3997. Okay, so just below 14,000. And this one over here as well, um, this one at 3967. So whilst above this low, certainly this low, you can happily be long now. You know, the market's dipped. We had to just go lower in here, dip just lower, and then rejected, dipping again in here. But I think if we can hold certainly this low here, um, looking for any further dip to hold there or you wait for the break higher and the the the, the high in here the overnight higher from um, just more recently and the last um, hour or so that's up at 14165 back up through 114 sorry through 14165 this looks all for me bullish again and looking for the leg not only up to here but potentially you know going back to the one hour uh, potentially notably higher you know not just above uh, yesterday's high you know we swing through here, it can be up back up to yesterday's high and then notably up higher maybe Maybe up towards like um 14500 and above um, up into this area up here um and again you know it, it might just need a little back off on this big rush into tr um, treasuries and, and bonds um we get a back off from there um you know they'll say they're kind of benefiting from the from the lower yield scenario um but you know you get uh, any kind of um you know, non-escalation. You know, you don't need good news. You just need not news, not to know bad bad news to come through. This could be another you know opportunity for people to come in and buy on this dip, buying the value. All right, everyone, um, I'm going to wrap it up there. Going to wish you all, as ever, a great trading day. Please do stay safe. I'll be back. Actually, James will be with you tomorrow for the uh, Wednesday Bull versus Bear webinar. I'll be back with you on Thursday. Until then, take care.